Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with Dev Central, and we're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. Today we're going to talk about the TLS Handshake, and we've actually done some other TLS Handshake videos, um, but the new version, the new uh, protocol, TLS 1.3, was just released, and uh, the Handshake actually changed quite a bit with this new version of, uh, of TLS. So specifically today we're going to talk about the TLS 1.3 Handshake. Um, if you'll, uh, if you remember back to the old version uh, or older versions of the TLS handshake, you have the you have a client on one end who is trying to establish secure communications with the server over here, and the thing that that starts off the whole handshake, and this is still true in TLS 1.3, is the client sends a hello message to the server, and I'm just going to put a little uh, arrow over there. And uh, previously, the client hello was sent, and you would have some supporting cipher suites and uh, a few other little details, uh, maybe some extensions, that kind of thing. And then the server uh, would say, "Okay, hey, I know what uh, cipher suites you're wanting to, to uh, or that you can support." But the server always gets to choose the cipher suite, and then it would send the server hello, and it would send its certificate, and then there would be some key exchange information going on. There, would, there was this uh, change cipher spec message that would go back and forth. And then finally, it would come down to a finished message on the client side, a finished message on the server side, and then the application data that is encrypted uh, would be able to kind of flow after that. Um, so the, the, the bottom line is with like TLS 1.1 or TLS 1.2, there were all those different steps involved in the handshake before you finally got to encrypted application data. In TLS 1.3, the entire idea is let's make this as short as we possibly can and get to that application data as quickly as we possibly can. And we do that in order to save time uh, because people that are out there on the internet, when they click, you know, go to this, their, their favorite website, then they want to be on the website, you know? And if they've got to wait for all this uh, exchange to happen or this handshake to happen before they can, you know, get to their data, get the page to load, then they're not happy. And we, uh, we don't want unhappy internet customers, right? So we want to shorten this uh, handshake. All right, so what happens with TLS 1.3? The client sends a hello message, and then I'm going to say supported, supported ciphers, supported ciphers that the client supports, which is not a, uh, a new thing. It did that in the past. Um, and then I'm also going to say uh, key agreements is, uh, is one term that they put in now. So supported ciphers and key agreements that it sends over to the server. And then here's the cool thing that it does kind of preemptively, if you will, and that is a key share. Key share. And one thing that I'll mention quickly is in TLS 1.3, um, perfect forward secrecy is mandated. Uh, so you have to use perfect forward, um, you know, capable cipher suites. Uh, and with that, you have this key exchange mechanism that goes back and forth. Um, just to give you a, uh, an example back in the older versions of TLS, you could use RSA for key exchange, but that does not support perfect forward secrecy, so you cannot use RSA for key exchange stuff. So with that, basically what the client is uh, going to say is hello, these different uh, ciphers that it supports, and then it's going to go ahead and uh, calculate a key share, and essentially what it's doing is it's, it's, is it's saying, hey server, I think I know what cipher suite that you're going to choose based on my list of supported cipher suites. And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say uh, more, more than one over here on the key share. Uh, and what it can do is it can say, hey, what I can do is actually calculate, preemptively calculate uh, what would be the shared key or for the key exchange purposes of this handshake. I'm going to go ahead and preemptively calculate multiple versions of a key share based on all the different ciphers that I support, and I'm going to send those over preemptively again with the hello message to the server. The idea is that if the server is to, was to pick any of these ciphers that I supported, it would already have the key share that it needs in order to generate the symmetric key that you're trying to get down to ultimately anyway. All right, so the, it's going to preemptively calculate the key share. It's going to send all that stuff over to the server. So now the server has all this information. So the server is going to say hello back, all right? And it's going to say uh, the chosen cipher suite because it still gets to make the choice. Chosen cipher suite, so hello, chosen cipher suite. 
and then it's going to have, and it's going to generate a key share as well. And that's used again in the key exchange algorithms uh, that are uh, that are you know used between client and server. So as long as it chooses a cipher suite based on one of the ones that the client uh, sent over, then this key share that this client sent is going to be able to be used by the server. Uh, with its own key share to generate the symmetric key that's needed for the encryption. Um, if, uh, and, and as long as that happens, then it's good to go. So it's going to send all of this stuff back over to the client, and now the client would then have the key share from the server, and it can also generate the symmetric key. And so at that point, both of them have the symmetric key that they need, and there's only been really one round trip in this whole thing. Um, once the server does all this stuff, then it can also... Uh, send a signed certificate, signed cert, and it uses the server certificate for authentication to make sure that the client knows that, hey, this is the actual server that you're looking for. Um, and I'm going to put a little lock next to that thing because, because it has the key share from the client and, of course, it's generated its own key share and then, it, and then that's all it needs in order to, uh, to have the symmetric key, then it can go ahead and encrypt this with the symmetric encryption key and then it's going to send its finished message finished message, and that is also encrypted. So all of this stuff gets sent back to the client, all right? Then the client has all this stuff, and as soon as the client gets the key share from the server, along with its own key share, it can do all the crazy cool mathematics to generate the symmetric key, and because it has the encrypted signed certificate and the finished message from the server, it can then decrypt that with the, sign, or with the uh, symmetric key, and so then it's got everything it needs. And so now it's ready to go ahead and say finished over here on its side and then it can go ahead and send its first HTTP GET message or whatever it needs and send it back over. So with one, uh, you know, with one trip from client to server with all this information and then another trip from server back here, then you're ready to go ahead and start sending HTTP data and of course over here, you know, this is the HTTP answer. Um, you know, from, from whatever the uh, server, however the server needs to answer that GET request, of course. All right, so that is the very abbreviated version of the handshake now that we're in uh, TLS 1.3. A couple of quick notes that I would uh, make. Uh, like I said, preemptively what the client does is it generates the key share uh, before it sends it to the server. Well, what if the server does not choose one of the supported ciphers that the client sent? If that happens, then the server sends what's called a hello retry request back to the client and it sends its key share, uh, calculated key share, back to the client as well. Basically saying, hey client, let's try this again. Why don't you send me a, uh, a cipher that I actually support? And oh, by the way, here's the key share that I'm going to use uh, based on the, uh, the cipher that I've chosen. Um, so a hello retry request. And if there are absolutely no common uh, cipher parameters or cipher suites that they can ever agree on, then the server based on the new protocol, the server must abort the connection and then send, a, uh, send an alert message back to the client saying, hey, this connection has been aborted and basically it's because we, can't, we cannot find common ground on our, uh, on our supported ciphers. All right, so this is a, uh, this is a, very, it's a very good step in terms of uh, um, you know, efficiency and speed uh, with respect to the TLS uh, handshake in version 1.3. So it's good to know how, how this thing happens and how it's different uh, from the previous version. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this, then you can click right here on the DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will see you guys out there in the community.